Um, hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Film Crack Crack, uh, where we talk about films uh, that for one reason or another um, are not easy to come by uh, in uh, either on DVD or, or with English subtitles, uh, not legitimately released uh, to English language audiences. And yeah. so we're coming back. We're coming That's back. That's our to... remit for now. We may change it at some point. We could yep. change it to films that are more um, enjoyable on crack. Yes, definitely. Or yeah. after a hard weekend down the mine shaft may soothe your crack. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Films uh, featuring uh, dirty great cracks in. One yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, I'm all up for doing that. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we uh, a little while ago we did uh, a film called uh, La Mansion de las Seven Momias. Um, Siete Momias. Siete, yes, that is true. Uh, we did talk about that on here, did we? We did, yes. Right, okay, because I, I have been watching, yeah, all the I've been watching some of these for this show, and I've been watching them myself as well, and I was a little bit mixed up because at some point as well, I remember talking to Darren about uh, Momias of Guanajuato film. But okay. was that with you? I have a feeling that might have been with Robin. That must have been with that must have been with Robin, yeah. Right. So oddly enough, I've been I've <laughs> been circling been, around this whole concept. Yeah, of... I can't get away from Guan which is quite actually have you ever been there? Because I know you've no. been to Mexico, but you've never been to Guanajuato, right? Because uh, no. I'm assuming you would make a beeline to see the mummies uh yes. next way, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd love to go see them. Because I as far as I know, they're still on despite despite being revived every few years by mad scientists with mm. midgets. I think they are still <laughs> on display, right? You can still go see them. Yes, yeah. Um, and so I think uh, Mansion was one of the ones that was shot in Guatemala. Yes, um, as were both of these films, right? We're going to talk. So about they these. both were okay. I thought yeah. I, I thought just uh, just the other mummies one that we're going to talk about was. Yeah, okay. I, I think so. So the producer for both, Rogelio Agra Sanchez, right? I think it's his production company. I think that's a. I think. Uh, a lot of their stuff was actually shot in Guatemala. I'm assuming cheaper to film there because right. both these films are a pretty low budget. I, well, no, the first one, in, I'm, <laughs> I'm very keen to talk uh, the first one because I mm -hmm. assumed of these two, the Mummies would be my favorite one. Mm -hmm. But actually, I think I might have a mm -hmm. bit of a soft spot for this space kid for. Yep. peculiar reasons that I will explain. But uh, mm -hmm. anyway, what is, yeah, uh, so yeah, sorry, you, you were, so uh, we had, so yeah, we, we, your we, Super Zan train there. Yes, so um, I think that might actually be the last Super Zan film, is the one that we started with. Um, I don't uh, know, because he went on, he did a few more, um, including that vampire one, right, the vampire of Right, okay. Of Elias, yeah. so Cocoa, yes, that place. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I am starting to think that because there aren't that many of them, we probably will do <laughs> them all. Do... Yeah, yeah, at some point. Yeah, I'd also be up for doing all of Tin Ablas uh, because yeah. he's my favorite costume. Wise. We'll get to that as well. Uh, later. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so we watched one and I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it had it had zombies. It had incredibly annoying. Do you remember the little uh, comic relief guy who kept like, Super Than, Super Than? Uh, um, his, his name was like Pingue or something. Like <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Super Than, I am your biggest fan. That's the one. And then there was... Uh, How could I forget, Nick? Really, I have a poster of him on my wall. Really great garage rock in that one too, and just a general feeling of like uh, strangeness that kind of permeated every cell yeah. of that film. Um, and I think we get some of that here too in both yeah. of these. I'm wondering uh, if there's something in the water in Guatemala. <laughs> yeah, maybe because I'm pretty sure that um, Swamp of the Ravens that's also Guatemala, isn't it? Uh, was that Ecuador or Ecuador? Yes, yeah, or Ecuador. Yes, right. you're right. I assume they're the same place or the same way. Uh, yeah, down there. Down there. Sure. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so we, we got two, two Super Zan films here for you. Um, so Super Zan are, appeared... Your swamp is full of ravens. They look the best. <laughs> I'm your biggest fan. Sorry, I just realized it's enormously good fun to play Pinguero. I just... <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, good times. Um, so Su Super Zan appears to have been... Uh, Created for the cinema, yes, and then exported into real life wrestling, right? 
Yes, uh, by this Agra Sanchez guy, I think, as well, in fact. Um, I think he is, the, yeah, he was the creator of Super Zan. And again, like you said, later on, did actually seem to be a, a legit a wrestler, yeah. wrestler. And the, his mask design is um, Flashman, apparently. That yes. Italian kind of superhero film. Um, and it he does have a very similar, although I, that, that would have, gone over my head I wouldn't have noticed mm -hmm. that unless someone pointed it out but it is the same kind of looking design even though I don't know a lot of those masks designs look a little bit but I, I guess Flashman might have been a hit mm -hmm. in Mexico because it is a Mexican production shot in Mexico. yes yeah uh, yeah it's very much, it's very much a, we're, we're talking this is it's a Lucha Libre film yeah. right Luchadors um I mean although I would argue actually that the first one uh Super Zan and the the child from space, right? Right. Um, that that's not exactly a lucha libre film at all. No. Uh, so it's it's interesting. El Niño del Espacio. Uh, yeah. Super it Zan and the Space Kid. Yeah. Takes a hell of a long time for Super Zan to show up in that film, actually. Uh, yeah. Quite a shockingly long time when you watch, because I watched it twice for some reason. I watched wow. it once without taking notes, and then and then a while later uh, I came back. I just watched it just for the pleasure of watching well, it and i'll be and very interested then you can speak to whether it actually makes any sense or not because no. oh okay right because that's it the thing less I'm sense thing about the second time you watch it actually oh wow um but uh but anyway so yeah um so he was spun off as i said he he isn't he is from another planet so this is established i guess in the original Super Zan, the Invincible film. Which we haven't seen yet. Which we haven't seen yet. And then this is, I guess, one of the earlier sequels because it's still very much... Yeah, well, it's the second one. So the, the, uh, this right. is the second Super Zan film and the next one we're going to talk about was his third one. So Right, Which, but then that already, I think, has moved into something else that's much more recognisable to me as a kind of a luchador Oh, absolutely. Film. Well, plus as well, the second film we're going to talk about is in a series that was already established, right? And Super Zan right. just being slotted in because, uh, yeah, those Mummies of Gonato film and uh, Champions of Justice or whatever, they had, like, rotating hero, like, whoever was available. Right, right. Uh, yeah, but this... It's amazing this, to, think, to think of it as being, like, a like an MCU, whatever the fuck, Marv, you know, uh, in Mexico, long before, the you know, Hollywood ever got this idea of, like, a shared universe where you could have your heroes appear in each other's movies and stuff, that Mexico was way ahead of the curve on that. Right, right, um, and the films are more entertaining. But anyway, yes. So, Absolutely. Super Zan and the Child from Space. Um, do you want to explain the plot to this, Clive? <laughs> <laughs> so, a little silver spaceship. Yes. Appears in a field. Yes, very small. Designed um, by the makers of the TARDIS, I guess, because once you're absolutely. inside, it's very spacious. Oh, you can definitely possible. stand up. You could you could be a quite a tall uh, yeah. Mexican wrestler and stand up we, and not hit your... We will, but we'll talk about the time and space elements of this film, because this rules of time and space don't apply to this film, uh, which is what makes it kind of bewilderingly fascinating, I think. Mm -hmm. Um so well, it opens it, does, it kind of opens with like the 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 the, the Mexican equivalent, or I guess possibly the Guatemalan equivalent of um John and Martha Kent, right? Uh yes, these, yes, these people, right? Come down and then find this spaceship has, has landed in their field. Yes. Know. Um, but it, I think it's a father and daughter, though, isn't it? It like, is in this case, yes. Know. Yeah. Yeah, so he's like a farmer or something, or something like a farmer and his daughter. And falls down a lot. He be, he quite quickly becomes our comic relief. Yeah. Dad. Spaceship um, turns up, uh, little teenage boy uh, who looks 14, but apparently is 273 years old. Yes, yes. From Although the, his, his, th his 13-year-old mustache would, yeah. would suggest. He's, in yeah. a, he's from the planet Arimina in the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, he has yeah. a perm, gold skin, a king, mm -hmm. yeah. and can communicate psychically, so he doesn't actually have to move his mouth. He just stares at people and we hear what he says. Yes, yes. In, which becomes increasingly the way that all dialogue is delivered in this film. Yes. Leads yes. to suspect that nobody uh, learned any dialogue <laughs> because maybe they had trouble. So there's no there's, there's no post-thinking of lips or anything going on here. You just got a lot of people looking at each other back and forward. And then a little bit of kind of uh, occasion, occasion kind of Dr. Gory from Spectre Man style. Um... Right, right. Um, 
So, and then there's a scientist who turns up who apparently has been in communication with this. Ah, uh, yes, Dr. Bentini. Dr. Bentini has been, uh, and and uh, and the space kid who may, I was a bit confused by the um, credits. Um, it's so the, directed by Rafael Lanuza, who was Guatemalan. Is this like his son or his brother or something who's playing the space kid? It's another Lanuza, oh, I think. Yeah. Um, so he explains that uh, I'm here to save your planet. Ah, yes. Because our dependence on fossil fuels, as it's very far ahead of time, is so serious that we are destabilizing the weight of the planet, which will That's cause right. the Earth to fall into the sun. That's right. Which will, for some reason, have effects that will look, stretch all the way to and the Andromeda galaxy. Yeah. Uh, which seems, uh, everyone knows. Yeah, that. obvious, obvious yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, uh, which will cause meteorites to crash into their planet. So they've come to share uh, for for their own good and their own benefit, as well as ours, uh, knowledge of of how to get us off fossil fuels. Yeah. Well, um, luckily they assemble a team of scientists and they they build a supercomputer and a energy mutator. Yeah. They're all set to go, but then it turns out, haha, Bentini is in fact very evil. And yes. He turns a gun on the space kid, and then the energy mutator, as well as doing whatever the fuck it does to reduce fossil fuel consumption, I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure, also means that people immediately transform from their lab coat into, like, capes. And yes. Things, right? Because Bentini yeah. suddenly... A cape becomes, Ming the, becomes Ming the Merciless. Yeah. Uh, One of his scientists turns into a caped um, kind of... I think this must be masked wrestler Edgar Echevarria, I'm thinking, because he's in this yeah. somewhere. And that guy looks like a wrestler, right? Well, uh, uh, early on, there's a great scene before they, they they turn the machine on, and we see his like lab assistants, right? And they're these fucking huge guys in lab coats with kind yeah. of pompadour hair, and they're kind of like they don't look like they spent that much time at the library, do they? No, they, the <laughs> no, they really like, don't. Yeah. <laughs> so it makes it makes a lot of sense when suddenly they all start wrestling later. Maybe they've been lifting ah. really heavy physics books to read them. Right. This Erlenmeyer flask is... <laughs> so then, and they also kidnap the daughter. Yes, and give her quite the glow up, in fact. Mm. Uh, she, uh, she's put into the, the whatever. The, the, oh yeah, the she turns into the cape. cape and she suddenly well. develops a kind of a short bouffant do and like a pink sparkly costume and a cape. Right. And then, eventually, about 35 minutes, Super Zan turns up. Yes. And he's more of a superhero than a wrestler because he can fly. Yes, yeah. Uh, his, all his flying scenes are mwah, fantastic. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, yeah. he's like, he's lying on a, like a park bench with his right. like, they just like, they got the it's, camera under him and yeah. It's very supersonic running and man. jumping out of frame and, you know. Yeah, very supersonic man, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. But beyond that, what I'll say is, um, yeah. What the fuck is going on in this film? Because <laughs> that you you'd think that oh I can, I can keep a handle on that, right? You've got mm -hmm. bad guy, good guy, good guy in this mm -hmm. help of superhero, uh, and I, I suppose the daughter is slightly conflicted because she's been brainwashed into helping, but she's not totally yeah. bad. Okay, yeah, this is these are the elements required for drama, the conflicts there. But I I I I was convinced at first I was losing my mind, right? Because I'm watching it, and like, say, for instance, they're all in the spaceship, right? And yep. like, ha, 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 I will do an evil thing to you, oh, yeah, whatever, right? And then cut to the same interior spaceship, space kid is there, scientist is gone, girl is there, and they start talking about, oh, we need to, you know, get super, and I'm thinking, where's the scientist gone? Because five minutes later, you're back in the same room, Mm -hmm. He's there again, and he's got all his kids <laughs> with him. And where does he keep going? Why does he keep leaving this kid by himself? He's clearly going to be... Super Zan turns up with a plastic ray gun thing. Yes, yes. Which and he used to free. Where is everyone going? Because then suddenly Super Zan's flying and he's chased. And the scientist is now in a car. And there's a car chase and all his minions are yes. like... Ooh. When did that happen? And then Super Zan beats everyone up and that's fine. But then 
he flies off, and then the henchman steal, beats someone up and steal their car, and then Superman's just flying past, and then someone's in a helicopter, and then yeah. they're back in the room, and <laughs> what's going on? It's not turning. I'm not imagining this. This was no, no, no. That's that's how pretty accurate. Out, right? it's that it's that. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like someone that's completely bad. didn't bother with things having to make sense in really. You know, it's like a yeah, it's like a theater of the absurd, off, 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 off Broadway mm -hmm. experimental <laughs> film. Or something. It's really strange, but as a result, I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> Because I felt high watching it, and I hadn't yes. taken anything to make me high. Yes. I was high on Super Zang. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about my experience. I mean, a few other things worth, I think, mentioning. There's, there's, um, there's, there's other characters who come into the narrative too, which is also <laughs> bizarre. Like, there's, like, there's the mayor of the town who's somehow vaguely involved because, yeah, cause, the cops. Cause, yeah, uh, and there's, and again, like scene missing or whatever, because Jen was watching with me, and she's like, suddenly they cut to this guy who's like, in like a full body brace or whatever, and he mentions he he was I don't know, trampled by cows or something while attempting to get to the spaceship, and like sorry, and he goes, and the guy's like, oh, I guess I'll have to get ghost, you know, uh, or you know, amazing reporter on the case, right? And you're like, well, no, who was that? And what was I he didn't even realize he was a reporter actually until later on in the film. I thought he was a... Because there's a bumbling policeman and he goes mm -hmm. to another bumbling police chief and they bumble together. And then for mm -hmm. some reason, they decide to go to a bumbling reporter. But I thought okay. he was just another cop because this is brilliant as well. He's introduced. They go and get him. He is at some kind of park or something, like lying yeah. on the grass with his girlfriend and they're going, yeah. we want you to go and sort out this thing or report it or whatever. And he's like, no, 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 no. And suddenly... In the background, uh, what, what <laughs> miniature trains goes past, right? <laughs> with like, yeah, and then smash the cut to him and his girlfriend oh, in said the... miniature train with his arm rider, and the other guy running behind them, <laughs> trying to go... <laughs> like, what's going on? Clearly they were like, let's maximise our potential production values. That park we're at, it's got that cool miniature train. <laughs> because, because the thing is, they don't have any effects budget, right, really. So, like, for yeah. instance, the spaceship... Um, handily doesn't like land or take off, no. it just disappears and reappears, right? Yes, although I do love so they got this, it's got this double kind of like so this door opens right on the side, which kind of like opens it, go reaches this point, and then like a shitty looking home center ladder just drops, <laughs> drops <laughs> into the, the ground. And then you've got these people coming out of this, the show, and we can see that they're hunched over because it's so small in there trying to. Get out, but then yeah, we cut to the inside. One at a time, one at a time. Space, right? You know, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. This 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 film is uh is made by a lunatic. Oh, and don't forget too, so that at one point, uh Dr. Uh Ventini, who, who renames himself Dr. Diabolical at the point where he gets his ridiculous Well, that's when he becomes an evil genius, right? That's right. Officially becomes an evil genius. Um, so he then he then teams up with um what was his name? Uh, like somebody else. He's basically the General Zod of the planet Armina. He shows up and he's like a massive wrestler version of the little gold kid with the same punch perm and gold. No, I think I, it wasn't he one of the scientists who was transformed by the machine into that. No, no, no. He basically he's, oh, he's pulled seen. out of some sort of like, yeah, he's pulled out of some sort of like equivalent of the Phantom Zone kind of a thing. Like he was, yeah. he is from Armina and then, but he's evil. And he wants to become the king of Armenia, so he needs to deal with uh, Golden Boy. Um, so he teams up with, and then there's that astonishing scene where he uses this child's toy vibrating yes, yes. thing, right? Which then causes strobing lights and everyone to freak out and, and kind gas. of gas. There's gas as well in that scene for some reason. Yes, people. and it just kind of, and then it just kind of runs out of batteries or something stops. He's like, "Oh shit!" Astonishingly disorientating film. I, I, I. There's very few films just this full on disorientating, right? Like Super Sans head gets run over at one point by a car. Uh, yes, that also was awesome. It's 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 a great film. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, I mean, if you're going to be objective about it, it is it is one of the shoddiest films I think I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. But goddamn it, if I didn't really really enjoy very it. entertaining. 
Well, what I liked about it as well, but extra little is so all that happens, and then at the end, there's mm-hmm. like this hmm, did it actually have a ding, ding, everything disappears. Mm-hmm. Now, normally, I would, yeah, okay, I get it, but because I'm so confused, I actually thinking, fuck you, film. You're gaslighting me, aren't you? You're actually <laughs> gonna make, make me convinced this didn't happen. And then the final, t- I really like the final letter, the credits roll, the farmer and his daughter yeah, go yeah. up the hill. Up the at hill, the very yeah. end, turn, tip of the hat. <laughs> <your Yeah>. <laughs> Lovely. <Yeah. laughs> yes, it was, yeah. Hell of a movie. Uh, so who's, oh. uh, sorry, we should say, who's the director? This one was Raphael. Rafa, yeah. Rafael Lanuza, yeah, Guatemala, Lanuza, yes. apparently, yeah. Um, and yes, you're right. Claudio Lanuza is Silio, who and Silio is the green, uh, whatever, not green, but he's he's the golden boy. So, yeah. also a lot yeah. of um, library music that I was very familiar with from like Monty Python and stuff like that. Yes, and there's one kind of sad piano <laughs> piece that plays a few times in the film that sounds a lot like an Andrew W. K. song called "Kill Yourself." Okay, um, which. Uh, jumped out at me but anyway um also apparently in this film uh according to if the imdb is believe is someone called augusto monteros who right. isn't in anything else as far as i know but apparently um is known for writing the world's shortest story <laughs> which goes when it woke up the dinosaur was still there <laughs> Okay, sure. <laughs> Thank you, Super Zan and the Space Kid. The the film just, just keeps on giving, right? <laughs> um, I think we so want that... a Criterion release with um, commentaries, tracks, uh, yeah. making of, and because I need to know more about what the fuck they thought they were doing mm-hmm. with this film, right? Mm-hmm. This is yeah. This is a a special special oh. film. One more thing that Jen really liked too, which is is the fact that, and you see it in a lot of these films, but it really came through in this one, is um, nobody's ever really in a rush to get anywhere. Uh, it's true. Super Dan, uh, the the big evil General Zod guy from, like, they're all kind of like, they're kind of like, pretty chill. Casually jogging. Yeah. Place, like. Um, I feel it might be hot in Guatemala. That's <laughs> probably what it is, yeah. Yeah. It's it's funny. I noticed this is that the certain c- countries do have their own vibe. I noticed a lot of um, Filipino films as well. Actually, I like you. You have to adjust to Filipino pacing, right? Then you'll enjoy the film. Like if you're right. too much of a, yeah, it's it's like a, it's a bit slow. But then if you're it's, like well, kind of island, the whole co- the concept of island time, right? Right. Right. Yeah. And then you'll yeah. enjoy the films. Like I remember watching Cleopatra Wong, for example. And I'm like, at first I was like, ah, this is... but then when I kind of just mentally adjusted to its I was mm-hmm. like, oh hang on, this is this is kind of cool, right? There's a the other one is a, actually the best way to the the I think the 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 key the key film for me anyway was in terms of getting the Filipino timing ones. Have you ever seen that mm-hmm. one? Um Fuck, what's it called? It's the one where they train. It's the Leo Fong film. Is it called Blind Fury? Not Blind Fury. That's the Rutger Hauer film. Mm-hmm. Where they train a bunch of blind people to rob a bank. It's like are, are people pretending to be blind. Um, nope. I have not. That sounds good, though. Yeah, it's good. And and that has exact. That's just a really... It was it, actually... Uh, it was in the Slezod Express book. And he, he mentions it in that book as being the perfect film to smoke a blunt. Too. And okay. uh, and yeah, that makes sense. And I think that was the film I remember watching and thinking, oh, I I I understand this now. And then after mm-hmm. that, I'm watching Cleopatra Wong. I was like, aha, you have to have Filipino time in mind for these to enjoy these films. What's the Filipino horror film that's kind of mastery? Like it's like not necessarily going second hand, but some but a guy who kind of like turns into a monster and attacks women and it stars somebody really really very well known from Filipino kind of trash cinema you're not talking about the Blood Island films with uh, John Ashley no no so I mean like um, they actually again they're films that are like not quite that exciting if you're expecting 
you know, the full on exploitation rush. But if you, yeah, if you switch to island time, then right, more enjoyable. Um, sure. Anyway, I'll... anyway, while you look that up, yes, let us. I mean, Super Zan and the Space Kid, check it out. We watched a fan subbed. This. Yes, it's out and about yeah. there. I don't think it's ever got an official English release. Although you, uh, yeah, I think you can. There's, you know, there's like weird some online vendors which are clearly just people putting stuff on disc that it that they yes. got torrents. Like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. DVD Lady, I think, is the big one, right? Like almost anything you can think of. If someone's put a subtitle file up online, <laughs> right? Sell they it on a disc. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if you don't, if you don't know how to negotiate anything else. I'm sure you can get Super Zan and the Space Kid from DVD Lady. Uh, for it. But, you know, you should be able to download it from somewhere. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks to the fan subbers again. Uh, it's, yeah. Your work is much appreciated. Indeed. Uh, but anyway, um, let's move on. Right. Let's move on to... You didn't uh, figure out what that film was. No, you? no, I'll, 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 we'll, we'll deal with that off air. Well, well, also, it's, it's uh, I mean, you know, that film where that man turns into a monster... Yeah, that yeah. does it down, Nick. Made in the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll turn out it's not. It's Indonesia or something. <laughs> Probably. Um, anyway. So uh so yes, we're on to uh a film not directed by uh the director of the last film. No. Um who did this one then, Clive? Because I have one on my window open right now. Tito Novaro. Okay. Uh, who also directed one of the other Guadalajara films. Um and he's in it as well, of course. He's the good doctor. The one who has oh, a yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we are talking, of course, about En el Castillo de las Momias de Guanajuato, the Castle mm -hmm. of the Mummies of Guanajuato, from '73. And now, what a trio we've got! So yes, yes. How how is Angus Scrim not in this? Is my question <laughs> because I got very strong phantasm vibes, uh, particularly when. When the uh, you know station wagon full of little people in you know, uh, right. Well, little people the up. little yeah. people are in the other uh, La Mamma de Guanajuato films as well, right? So it's a, a bit of a, a, a trope of well, the series, a trope of that genre. Yes. Okay, because of course, yeah, if you're attempting to, and no offense to any little people out there, but hmm. if you're going to take over the world, yes, why not have as your henchmen people who can't reach things on high shelves? Hmm. You know. They're going to be the most familiar. Although there's one of them, is it the, is it the robbers of the members? The one before this, I think, is the one where one of the dwarf characters says, "But we are," <laughs> he says something. We are pathetic midgets. So he puts them in a machine that turns them all super strong, which is wow. quite amusing. So you have this scene of these dwarves like throwing masked wrestlers through the air, uh, which is that quite sounds good. awesome. I have. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's good for okay. So yeah, so here we go. So we've got Super Zan mm -hmm. is back. Yep. But he's very much uh, a man of the earth now, it feels like, because he just drives around in a red van. Yeah, he uh, doesn't fly about uh, anymore. No. He's not kind of he's lost a lot of his 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 more uh, unearthly trappings. He's and he's seems to be a wrestler now because yes. we definitely get uh scenes of him wrestling. In fact, it, it becomes quite funny later on in the film when the stakes are really high. The kids being kidnapped, people are being tortured, and they just take a break. Oh, oh well, yeah, we got that. We got that championship bout. We gotta, we have to do that, guys. Yeah, they go and do that, and then get back to the. Well, that's another thing you get used to in these Mexican wrestling films, though. and it's fascinating to, to, for me to see how it varies from film to film. I guess depending on how much padding they need or how much principal photography they get. Right. Some of them have got hardly any. Like there'll just be one brief wrestling match just to establish. And then it's, but no, mm -hmm. like this one, there's like long scenes of, and yes. this isn't even the longest. There's some of them with like even more scenes of just endless wrestling, wrestling right? Um, in the, in this case, they fight with uh, Goliath, Bronco, and the Troglodyte. Troglodyte, yes, yeah. I like Troglodyte. Um, um, so you got Super Zan, right, in his <coughs> in his uh, third film, and this is also the third in the Mummy Zagonato series. Mm -hmm. So previously we had the Mummies of Guanajuato, which was uh, Blue Demon, uh, Mil Mascaras, and interesting, Tiniablas yes. was in that one, but he wasn't Tiniablas the wrestler 
he was a wrestler, but in the film, right. he's not a wrestler. He plays the head mummy Satan. In oh. the film. So he's not... And he then plays. and then we had the robbery of the mummies of Guanajuato, which was Mil Mascaras, Blue Angel, and Le Reo del Jalisco. So Blue Angel okay. returns in this one. Uh, the second of only two films he made, I think. So he's he's obviously a bit of a Blue Demon ripoff, right? Uh, that and maybe, uh, you know, Marvel Comics sent him a cease and desist because with the big white A on his blue, uh, okay. quite Captain America looking. And then we have, uh, yeah, Tinieblas, El Gigante. Who looks like he's been ported out oh, of... He's awesome. Uh, uh, like a Power Rangers thing. Like yes, his exactly. Is very Japanese looking to me. Well, his mask looks like a crash helmet, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he does have that. Yeah, he has that Power Rangers VR troopers look. Mm. Which I really yeah, like. it's a great, great costume. Um, and the, and also the other reason I like him in one of his earlier films. So so he's he's also in the first Champions of Justice, uh, Mummies of San Hang Angel. And um, did we watch together Macabre Legends of the Colony? Which was another no. one I think shot in Guatemala. Right. So, yeah. So, he's in that as well. What I like about Tiene Ablas is he look, he's the coolest looking. But also yeah. in Macabre's of the Legends of the Colony, he's established as he's a horn dog as well. So, oh. Tiene Ablas is... That's my man. He's he's okay. my boy. I like Tiene Ablas. Oh, maybe you, I, I wonder how many movies he's in because we, we might need to do yeah. all of them. I, I mean, I like El Santo. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. you know, El Santo's the man, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, maybe Tiene Ablas is my... My choice. Okay. Obviously, you're a you're a super zan. I'm a super zan man because he seems to appear in stuff that's certifiably bonkers. Um, <laughs> you can tell I haven't a lot. Seen one of them yet that hasn't you can been. Tell a like... lot about someone who is your favorite masked wrestler. It's, it's a <laughs> it's a good poll to take, right? Good who's, your test. who's your favorite wrestler? Tell a lot about them. Um, and then yeah, you've fact... one person who's like, my I like Pinguero the best. He's he's. he's, he's... <laughs> I, you know, next time I'm there, actually, I should definitely look into uh, finding, if I can, finding a mask because they still make the masks, right? You can still buy. I have, them. A, I have an El Santo mask. Yeah. Right, but I'd like to buy something more. Uh, Not a good proper we, one with the strings at the back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. I, I don't mean that. I just mean I want to buy something where, like, yeah, I'd like to find. Do they? Is there a Super Zan mask? Is there a? Ah, a, probably. Uh, I would have thought. Um, yeah. Or a La Momia Stick on a hot mask would be good. Right. A Pinguero mask. <laughs> um, so I, this movie does something that I think is really, I've never seen before. Um, you probably have because you've seen uh, everything. Um, but so it opens, the credits are a series of billboards that they're yes. passing by as they drive their little red. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Pretty fucking awesome. I was like, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have seen it in I've never seen. Films, but yeah, no, that's okay. notable for sure. And some nice Dutch kind of angles as well, as they kind of, you know, the camera like placed below the sign as they go past. Um, yeah, so also, they have a guitarist, yeah. they have a guitarist in the back of their band that just kind of noodles. Well, he's uh, the promoter as well as me. And they have a pipe smoking driver. Yeah, with the cardigan. <laughs> Who's wondering course. who the real wrestlers are? Yeah, so they 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 have to stop as well and help uh, a couple of chicks who yep. broke down their car. This is a uh, Zulma Fayad, who I guess was a big deal singer, and yeah, she's okay. a club singer here. And yeah, her and her manager are stranded on the side of the road, and of course, yeah, I the really thought manly gentlemen in I love the scene yeah. of them jumping out of the van. You know, <laughs> like they're like. Well, what I love about in these films, what I like about these films is it's established and masked wrestlers walk among us, right? So at no yeah. point in this or any of these films, when they jump out the van and go, Senorita, so we can help you fix your car, no one goes, What Holy the fuck, fuck are you wearing? <laughs> no. In fact, no. they go, Oh, it is such an honor. Like, <laughs> yes. we are big fans of yours. Because <laughs> that's the, other, the thing about El Santo, that considering El Santo's um like supposed to be this you know man of mm -hmm. virtue and, and an upstanding gen man does he he gets a different good friend in every single film mm -hmm. like he yeah he he's he's, he around. he's really getting through them you know but i would wonder too though because mass wrestlers 
because it was this weird thing where they were they were on screen, but they're also potentially like down at the local you know wrestling mat or yes. whatever you know, that like seeing them getting out of a van might have been a moment of like you wouldn't have been like in Mexico it probably was something that you saw and you were always pleased like fuck yeah I just oh, man. Saw I, if I knew this was going to happen I would hang out on the side of the road with a fake like uh, hoping that the masked wrestler would stop <laughs> and help me just I, so I could say thank you masked man my um, dad is a mechanic and I just realised that like we need to get him a mask and yes. I'll the two of us can drive around. But well, he's uh, also built like a real man, unlike yourself, isn't he? So exactly, he could, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, could, you could be his pinguero. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> super dad, super dad. <laughs> Help the ladies. So yeah, I also like the fact. So um, you know, the film, as I said, we did mention before, that uh, at some point, quite early in the film, um, basically a bunch of little people hop out of a station wagon um, and abduct a child. I don't think we mentioned, right? Mm. Take him back. It turns out there's an evil scientist, uh, Dr. Tanner, uh, who's kind of wheelchair bound, um, also takes blasts of what maybe are, is nitrous oxide. He kind of does a little Dennis right. Hopper routine. This um, is Carlos Bravo y Fernandez, who plays the uh, yeah, the main guy. Uh, which okay. was, yeah, again, shot in Antigua, Guatemala, right? This film, yes. It's um, I, I'm not quite sure what the so the, yeah he sends out. I thought okay, I understand this. You send out your army of little people. You kidnap the child, yeah. and you bring the child back, and then of course you send a blackmail note or whatever, to, and that's mm. how you get um, Tito Navarro, the director, as the good scientist. Mm. But but they don't. They kidnap the child, and then immediately go okay. Let's go kidnap the father. So you yes. Oh, so there was was there. What was the point of getting the kid? Of, no, mm -hmm. I couldn't quite figure that no. out. Other than it's just evil. Yes. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so, and they so he, the, the Tito Navarro character, who's, I, I guess, it's slightly confusing, but is he basically forced to operate on... On the other, the, the, the evil so, yeah, yeah, he's wheelchair bound and he's on oxygen, but then... He's going to give him a heart transplant, and he's, he says, well, I can't do that because, you know, uh, it's a death sentence. Like, we've only done it with animals, and you, you'll, you know, you'll die. Right. Well, I, I only need three days in order to complete my my gra my life's work, my grand yeah. work, or whatever it is. Well, he's seen Night of the Bloody Apes clearly, and the other guy yes. has. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so so yeah, so so they so he does, I guess, he does get his uh, the operating theaters all set up, and he gets yeah. his heart transplant. But meanwhile, Super Zan apparently, as he drives around from town to town doing his wrestling matches, he also stops at the local police station at each place. To just check in and be like, you need help with anything? For any crimes? Yeah. Anything going on? Uh, and uh, in this case, the inspector's like, oh, Super Zan, thank God you're here. Yes. Uh, you know, scientists and his son have been kidnapped. I was slightly disappointed that Tina Blas isn't really horny in this one. He's like... No, yeah, they talk about, about how... Them. I do like though they, they did talk at one point about how uh, how muy photogenico they are under their masks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, I so watched. Oddly enough, I watched recently uh, uh, Santo versus Frankenstein's daughter, and it's telling because I think it's the first one in the series that El Santo maybe produced himself. Uh, he produced it anyway. So yeah, mm -hmm. lots of talk about how amazingly handsome he is. And mm -hmm. If only you could see what he looked like. <laughs> and also in that one, it turns out it's the first one. I think it turns out that uh, El Santo's not all, all just awesome. Basically, but he's also got awesome super blood, which is one of the reasons he's so awesome. So uh -huh. um, people want to get hold of his blood. Um, oh so speaking of blood, so see if if this tracks. It, it's this mm. what happens. This is what I read it as. So yeah. uh, finally, once he's uh, the evil doctor has um, uh, Carlos Bravo Fernandez is you know better, and he gets yeah. little people, and then. He's interested in the black arts as well, right? Science and yes, and immediately they smash, as soon as he's back on his feet, he's like, "Time for a black mass." And then we see right. him uh, playing the organ, which is great. He's yeah. out there like noodling Always on a good. board, you know, while his little people are now in robe. As I said, gets very phantasm for a little bit here. Um, they're kind of out there, and yeah, he's uh... well. So they re so this is interesting. So the mummies Guanato in real life and in the films thus far as well. Uh um, you know, it's a it's a tourist trap, right? Mm -hmm. You can go and see him the lined up 
you know, along the walls. But at some point in oh. the interim between the last film and this, yeah. one, they've been buried, which is a strange thing to do. We get a very Giannetto de Rossi, you know, yeah, zombie. Yeah. It's quite good, actually, like of it them rising up out of the dirt. Yeah. Yeah, so um, he rises the what do I remember is apparently that I guess someone discovered that someone decided, well, yeah, they bring in a lot of tourists, but fucking hell, they keep getting revived by mad scientists and so yeah. let's just bury the cunts. Mm -hmm. So now they're up and about. So then the plan <laughs> is, if I'm correct, yes, uh the evil Dr. Tanner, he wants to collect hormones which are yes. produced in the blood. Only when people are in extreme agony. Yes. And these yeah. hormones will help him stay young. Yes. So therefore he attacks villages and stuff and yeah. brings back the to townspeople to his torture dungeon. Yep. And has them tortured. While he extracts their yeah. blood. This is so he correct. Right? This is, that's exactly, yeah. that's exactly right. how it goes down. Yeah. Um, which gives us the hilarious scene of one of the, uh, the zombie mummies. Uh, yeah, you know... Yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, yes. Breaking into a home and uh, attempting to pick up a, a, a larger lady. But is it like a, it's a hair salon or something? Is it? <laughs> right. And then basically going, fuck this, and picking up a slimmer lady. Which <laughs> maybe, maybe being a, a, a lady with a certain thickness is a positive in this situation, right? Because you're less likely to be abducted yeah, by psychopathic uh, people who yes, want to torture that's you. That's right. It's not fat shaming. It's an early. It's an early bit of a uh, pre -Bridg Bridgerton uh, positive, yeah, yeah, body body positive woman yeah. role models. Yes, yeah, yeah. If you're if you're you know not uh, hot and twig like the hairdresser, you will not be snatched by the mummy <laughs> mm -hmm. one after. So keep eating. Yeah, um, yeah, and so all those scenes. So those scenes are amazing when we do like cut to the dungeon, basically, right where all of these. Women are being abused, uh, and some men. Um, yeah. And then we got these kids, like who are also in this cage while this is all going on. And yeah, the noise, the, yeah. yeah, the noises the women are making are so sexual, like so insanely, like the moaning and like it's. it's I was just like, like this seems really weird and inappropriate. Well, I don't. I don't mean to. I don't mean to yuck your yum here, Nick. And mm. you know, I'm. I'm the man with his head constantly in the gutter. So mm. if I'm the one who's about to tell you, that says more about you than the actual <laughs> film itself. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. I mean, I okay. know what you mean, but okay. also I think you might be overstating it. And <laughs> God, God bless I don't think so. You. God bless you for no I'm honest. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's exactly as I've stated. Um, <laughs> Everyone anyway. had a hard on in that scene, not just me. <laughs> and then a completely bizarre scene of Super Zan uh, untying the little boy's uh, like tight hands with his teeth. Right, that, right. that was weird. Um, I mean, also oh. worth mentioning the music. There's really, I, I wrote down the composer uh, Bernardo Serrano or Bernardi Serrano. I mean, there's a lot of weird shit going on on this side. There's like yes. electronic bleeps and like yep. mixed with acoustic guitar and then some kind of jazzy, like the, the, yeah. the plays out at the end. Uh, it's really good. There's some yes, really yeah, good music yeah. on the soundtrack. Hawk, hawk windy. Kind of yeah, because you're never like, quite sure if you're going to get just some library, which itself sometimes is yeah. awesome as well. Or, but this actually does seem like an original score. And uh, Ooh, yeah, yeah, I mean, fuck knows. I mean, if you're lucky enough, if you're, you know, if you're cruising the back streets of Flea markets, Juarez, and you right. stumble across a vinyl copy of mm -hmm. the soundtrack to NL Castillo de las Mamias de Guanajuato, please, Nick, even if yeah. you don't want it, which I'm sure you will, pick yes. up a copy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, and and you know we we get lots of scenes of of our three mask wrestlers fighting zombies, fighting little people. Mm. Uh, I mean, really, what more could you? I, I just I want one of my notes just says, "Shit, these films are easy to watch." Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, a, just... it's a feast for the eyes, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Oh, I, I just, so this is the one too where there's like a, there's some scenes where all three of them jump into different cars. Uh, of our wrestlers and they're driving and they it almost becomes like um, 
the road warrior, like just something about these like hulking guys in these masks driving these kind of like uh, big fucking boat cars of the seventies. Yeah, just yeah, just I, awesome. Just like, awesome. Like, like you said, I, I I've watched quite a few of these films now, so the general just kind of awesomeness of them conceptually uh, has slightly worn out. Right. Not, right. not that I don't really enjoy it. I still do. But uh, just to try and be... I, I would say this one is... um Yeah, it's quite fun, but it's not... It's not top... T- I wouldn't highlight this. Yeah. Uh, this is a... I mean, it's not... And certainly it's not as... I, I At least I understood the story of this. And like... <laughs> right. Space kid. Like, that's just... Yeah, that's... That's on another level of... Uh, <laughs> Of what yeah. the fuck? But still, uh, I mean, I, I I don't know. I can't. I can't. You'd have to. You'd have to really go out of your way to make me dislike uh, Las Momias de Guanajuato film, right? Mm-hmm. Just the idea, and then the fact that they they're in the ground, and it's just that there's so many elements. Even if it's a substandard one or not, the peak mm-hmm. of the. You know, see or whatever. It's just like, I mean, if you're gonna, <laughs> if you're us, you're gonna watch all of these anyway. Yes. Right? So yes. no way you're not watching <laughs> right. the entire Mummy as the Guanajuato series, right? I will say one of my favorite, um, because generally speaking, the 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 fan subs are really good, but there's one moment where like it, it either like they're having fun with it. Because they have to be. So uh, one of the one of the th- side threads is um they're trying to figure out um, some church bells went off during the Black Mass. So so therefore, they figured out that there must have been a nearby a Catholic church that was having like a, a midnight mass. Right. They're trying to find this church in order to find the broken down warehouse that's nearby to find where all these people are being tortured. So there's a lot of scenes of like the wrestlers like standing outside of churches talking to like various padres, right. like, you know, yeah. like uh, shaking their heads and, you know, the guys, mm, not, not my church. Um and then at one point when they finally get the right one, uh, what is the Spanish is clearly like muchas gracias padre, and it's translated as thanks dad. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like yeah, yeah. I know that technically <laughs> padre means well, dad. You never know. It could be backstory. He could have been visiting his <laughs> right. estranged father while he was uh, he became a priest. In the area. Yeah. yeah. Also, you get, I get the feeling whenever like one of those huge, uh, you know. Adios, and they walk away, and there's a slightly sad look in the in the vicar's faces, like which is, ah, like, oh, why didn't I become a masked wrestler? <laughs> yes. What's that thing about? Isn't it? Is is it the thing they talk about in Father Ted in I like this? The smart brother was often becoming yes. the, the stupid one. Became yes. the, I'm wondering yes. if there's a similar thing with the good-looking, <laughs> talented one became the masked wrestler, the other one stayed <laughs> behind and became the uh, the priest. Um, but no, you might be onto something. I suspect there's someone in the Spanish language fan subbing community who's doing these mixes who might be taking the piss because there's a there's one of the uh, is it I think it's Nel Santo film. I can't remember which one, but there's a character in it, and you know because sometimes they have a a little kid or something like that. Right. Like some of the more family friendly ones, and there's a particularly annoying little boy in one of them. And I think it's at the end of the film or something over the credits, after the credits, the little boy has a scene where he sings a song in his obnoxious little boy voice. And whoever's fans of it, of course, is just taking the piss. So the new lyrics to the song are, uh, I am Carlos Jr. I am an annoying little shit. I annoyed <laughs> the fucker to view during this whole movie or something like that. So, yeah, I think there is some yes. okay, uh, having fun. Good. Yeah. And then... Because then, like, quite right at the very end, suddenly they amp up the subs because we get we get either, I can't remember one of them, I might be Super Zan, who says to uh, the evil doctor, take that, you goddamn fuck. <laughs> Which is, what? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh die the back, Super Zan. <laughs> that's, that's a bit long. Um, and then also, uh, right after that, like, when the doctor dies, then one, one of them might be, uh, um, what's his name? The guy with the A on his head. Um, Blue Angel, yeah, Blue Angel. I think says he is the most forgettable of the three, isn't it? To be fair, Shit. even though <laughs> having a huge A on your head, you're the least yeah. visible that says something, right? Right. Um. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I had lots of fun. I had lots of fun with this one too. Um, as I said, it it had, uh, 
it, it felt weirdly familiar, maybe because I'd already seen one of these mm. films, uh, Seven, The House of the Seven Mummies. So there was that. But then, yeah, something about it also had, yeah, really felt like phantasm to me. I don't know why. It had this kind of like that same kind of like slightly gritty, green. It's very dreamlike as well, isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, so just a context, uh, as we said, Blue Angel wasn't in anything else at all mm -hmm. uh, after this. Super Zan was next in the third of the Champions of Justice series. This is for people taking notes. Triumph of the Ch uh, Champions of Justice with Blue Demon and El Fantas. I have. I, I've already got that. So. Okay, okay. Right, we'll be watching that then. Um, yep. And... Uh, uh, and oh yeah, so after that, Superzan was also teamed up with Tinia Blas again in Capulina the Detective, which sounds to me like that might be one of the more comedic. I'm thinking this Capulina guy might be a an annoying comic relief. Oh, okay. I think he was in another. I think there's an El Santo film which he turns up in. So yeah, I mean, unfair. I haven't seen it, but I'm suspecting that's dregs at the bottom of the barrel you get to last right when you run out of fun don't even know that i've i don't have this at the moment yeah i do uh, those vampiros so i can grab mm. oh yeah we definitely want to be seeing that um yeah so more masked fun to come yes um until then thanks dad <laughs>